live from the Washington, D.C. area. It's the Inside Scoop, all the news that our viewers want to know. Now, here's the host. Welcome back. I'm Bettina Lawton, the host of Inside Scoop Virginia, and we are doing a candidate showcase tonight. And we are moving on to another challenger. And this time we're going to be talking to John Bell. Now he is coming in via Skype because his district isn't so much any Fairfax district. We're going to put the map up and you can see where he is. But we are Skyping John in so that he can participate. And John, I want to welcome you to the show. This is your inaugural visit. And um, we'll see how it goes. And for some reason, we've got, oh, my little thing keeps doing that. But that's your district, which is kind of like really long. And that's all, is that all Loudoun County? Are you all Loudoun County? Or Pe uh, Prince no, we actually have 17 Prince Loudoun County precincts, two Prince William precincts. So vaguely, if you look at it, it starts right around where Route 28 and Route 7 are at, uh, just a little bit beyond that. And then it goes along Route 28 on the Loudoun County side, encompassing the Dulles Airport all the way over to 66, mm. heads west from there all the way to Haymarket. So the two Haymarket precincts uh, are just beyond Route 15, and the rest is Loudoun County, 17 and the 19 precincts. Wow. So tell us about yourself. You're a brand new candidate, and John Bell is, is who? Uh, well, thank you first for the opportunity to be on your show. I greatly appreciate it, and to uh, to share this with uh, some with Kay and some of the other great uh, uh, candidates that are out there. Um, my background: I'm a retired Air Force officer. Uh, I served in the Air Force for almost 26 years. Uh, during my career, I was a budget officer, so my background is really managing money, balancing budgets, uh, working with all different stakeholders who have different needs and desires to make collaborative decisions and get missions accomplished. So as I say, that's really what uh, this campaign and what my service in Richmond will be about is working with others to solve problems. Uh, that's been my background. Now, since I retired in 2007, I've uh, been fortunate to continue uh, doing this profession in the private sector. I've also been very involved in my community. I coach the boys tennis team at Freedom High School, which is right in the heart of the 87th district. And I've coached that team as a volunteer now for six years. And it's given me a great opportunity to get back to my community, mentor children, and to, uh, to really get involved and know people. So how long have you actually lived down there? I mean, Air Force folks tend to travel around. Have you been there for a while? Well, since I retired in 2007, I've lived here. Before that, uh, I had a tour at the Pentagon uh, when I was still in the military. And I actually lived in Prince William in Haymarket, so the Haymarket portion of the district during my Pentagon tour. So uh, I've, I've lived here for a while in uniform and then in retirement. So why are you running? I mean, you're running against an incumbent, and as Kay said in the prior segment, it takes a lot of guts to do that. I mean, what, what in the world led you to decide to do that? Well, I, I actually like public service a great deal. I think my call to service really began 19, in 1981 when I joined the Air Force right after graduating from high school. So I've always had a, a strong connection to public service. That's why I volunteer at the schools. And I looked at really where we're at in Virginia, what our House of Delegates is doing. Uh, and and the, the things that they've passed, the extreme measures last few years, and really what my opponent, David Ramadan, has done, I think is out of touch with this district. And, you know, I look in the mirror and ask, what can I do about it? Well, what I can do is step up and run and promote the values and things that are really important to people in this district. So that's why I'm running. Well, now you say you question the values and whether he matches up with the district. What are you talking about there? Well, I believe it's, it's really about uh, making the right parties and having the right allegiances. And, and the parties that, that are important for me is in this district, a district of people with very difficult commutes is transportation. We need real transportation solutions. Uh, I applaud everyone who voted for the transportation bill this year. David Ramadan did not. He said three times to vote on transportation since he served. Every time he voted, no. Uh, in this district of really tough commuters, that's a hard vote for me to understand. And when I talk to people, they agree with me on this. Uh, the other one is, is education, very important, oh, yes. and he has a bad voting record on education. Has voted against most of the education referendums that have come to, to uh, the General Assembly in the last two years. Uh, I talked to people in the district, and what's important to them and why they moved here was for great schools and a good quality of life. So education, transportation, connect uh, in that respect. The other thing which, which I can tell you is important that I have firsthand knowledge in coaching children uh, for the last six years. Parents want to be involved in their children, uh, in, their, in their lives and in their activities after mm -hmm. school. And if commutes are so tough, they really struggle to get back 
to, to see their children. So um, improving transportation is very important for business, not just now, but for our future in Virginia and our district, but it's also very important for families and quality of life. And then, you know, lastly, I think jobs are very important. Creating jobs in the district, closer to home. If jobs are closer, then you don't have to drive so far to go to work. And I think that's an important priority too. And I believe the way we can do that is, is make Virginia more inviting to everyone, uh, not pursue divisive social policies, but pursue uh, measures that will bring business here, promote business. Uh, that's where we can make Loudoun County and in Virginia a better place. Loudoun and Prince William County is part of our district. Well, a lot of people are moving out into that area and the commutes really are just killers. I mean, when you talk about your district and the major roads you mentioned, they're all parking lots at the end of the day. So I'm surprised, or maybe I just shouldn't be surprised that, that he opposed the transportation bill, but that's, that would seem to me to be a major, major issue for you folks out there. It, it is a major issue. I believe that uh, he said, he commented afterwards, it was a matter of principle. And I think the bottom line is he put ideology above the needs of the people in this district. And when it comes to allegiances and priorities, for me, it's gonna be putting the people in the district first. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna see the children I coach at tennis and their parents, and sometimes how disappointed they are when they show up to watch their children play tennis and they're almost finished, right. or they are finished. So that's where my priorities are gonna be. Well, I don't know a lot about Ramadan, except his name always makes me go, ooh. Um, what, didn't he get subpoenaed to a grand jury or something? Didn't I read that recently? He's involved in some kind of, the, is it the star, star, star scientific situation? There's something bad going on with him. What is all of that about? You probably don't want to talk about it, but I'm going to ask you about it anyway. Well, I don't know a great deal about it. I know basically what you know, I've, what I've read in the paper. Uh, he got a subpoena to appear at the grand jury uh, related to Governor McDonald and some gifts. Uh, that's about all I know. You know, what I do know is I think transparency and ethics is very important in, in our government today, and we've clearly had some lapses in that. Uh, David robinon has been part of that. Uh, he mm -hmm. took a trip to Taiwan and didn't report it, and this was actually uh, brought forward by one of his uh, colleagues. It was a gift from the Taiwanese government, and he initially said, well, I don't have to report that, even though I think the code, as a delegate Ken Plum pointed out, is very clear. Mm -hmm. uh, however, uh, he decided that since it was on Facebook and Twitter, that was good enough. Well, yeah. I disagree. You know, I, I'm, I don't find my income taxes that way. Uh, there's laws and, and rules on how we have to do these things. And, and we, we have to be transparent, tell people if we get a gift, who it comes from and, and, and when they gave it to us, how much, and so on and so forth. I believe and I support the gift ban that others have proposed. You know, I believe you should serve in public office because you want to serve the people, not to enrich yourself. During my Air Force career, we weren't allowed to take gifts over a very small amount, like $10. And in the private sector, I work for a company. We don't we don't allow gifts at all to to any of of, of our uh, employees or to uh, to our customers. And I think that's what we need to do for state officials. I also, think not only does it need to be a dollar amount that's very nominal, it also needs to be reported in a timely manner. So if you get a gift, it's reported right away, not right. waiting a year till it becomes right. public knowledge. I think the public deserves better than that. Do you support the the push to include families and immediate relatives? That seems to be. In the governor's situation, a lot of the difficulty, a lot of these gifts seem to be going purportedly to his wife or his kids or whatever. And as I understand it now, it only has to be if the gift comes directly to you that people need to report it. Do you support expanding that? Yeah, absolutely. I think, I think we have to include families. If that's a loophole that allows, you know, again, a lack of transparency to the voters, then we need to correct that. So I absolutely support that change as well. What do you say to folks when, you know, are the big issues? I assume you're going out on the doors like everybody else is. What are they, they talking to you about? Is it all transportation and jobs or, or what else is out there? Well, there are a number of issues, but I can tell you transportation dominates everything that I hear. Uh, and it, it's really roads, jobs, and schools. It's everyday issues. And as a delegate, mm -hmm. that's what I'll serve them and that's what I'll do. Th those are the, folk, the priorities that I will focus on, uh, everyday issues. not extreme social issues or or taking a, a, a ideology that goes you know all the way to the right or to the left I think is bad I think we need to be, be more moderate and we need to be willing to work with everyone to get problems solved again you know that these are basic things I learned I think my mother taught me that when I was in kindergarten but uh, in, in the business world in my military career you know we, we had a mission to accomplish we were given a budget 
We couldn't go back and get more money, but the mission had to be accomplished. And obviously every stakeholder had their own priorities, so we worked together to make sure that we made compromises and to get the mission done. And that's what that's what the approach I believe is most effective. Now you're sort of, you know, we up in Northern Virginia, the real parts of Northern Virginia, um, <laughs> although I guess we're, we're creeping down into your way, but where do you stand on some of these social issues? The, the reproductive health, health issues, women's health, uh, the you know gay issues. There's a lot of um, when you talk about social issues, that seems to be the big agenda. Is you deny rights to anybody who doesn't look like you. Mm -hmm. So well, where where are you mm -hmm. on that spectrum? Well, let, let me just say, uh, in Loudoun and Prince William counties, we also do consider ourselves Northern Virginia. <laughs> but uh, on those issues, I am, I'm pro-choice. I just don't believe that the government should be involved in right. the intimate private areas of deciding a woman's reproductive rights. I think women uh, need to decide that on their own. Uh, I have two daughters and two granddaughters, and I don't want any politician telling them what they can and can't do with their body. And the, uh, you know, my opponent has supported personhood. He supported something called spousal consent. These are very extreme measures. He voted in favor of the transvaginal ultrasound requirement. Uh, I believe that, 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 again, reproductive choices should be between um, the, the woman and her doctor and whoever else she chooses to bring into that situation. And uh, those who advocate small government, I, I agree with what uh, I've heard from others, is this is not small government, this is big government. Uh, as far as equality goes, I believe in equality for all citizens. I think discrimination of any form is bad. Uh, I served in the military for almost 26 years, and my service was protecting the, to protect the rights of all Americans. And it really bothers me when any American is denied the same rights as another. And uh, I believe equality is something that, that, that uh, Virginia has quickly changed its mind on, and, uh, and I've, I've been a longtime supporter of equality. Well, do you think, you know, because I do think there's more of a trend towards the equality on the, the gay issues, do you think we'll ever get around to changing the Constitution? Because in Virginia, that's what we have to do. Mm. It's sort of we embedded it a number of years back, and we're kind of stuck. Yeah, I believe with Marshall Newman, we enshrined our Constitution with discrimination. And, uh, and, and I think that this is a wrong that needs to be righted. Mm -hmm. uh, it, the road to, to getting rid of it, I believe, started with uh, the uh, Supreme Court decision on Defense of Marriage Act. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but I believe you know, we're, we're going to have to take actions. Virginia is not the most inviting place for business. It's mm -hmm. not the most inviting place for all citizens. There's a number of companies who said they won't come here and do business because of these discriminatory policies. So well, again, I, I just don't believe, again, with a, with a take on, on big government versus small government, government should not decide who you can and can't love. And, uh, and I strongly believe that every person, every American has that right to choose on their own. Well, thank you for being with us, John. Good luck. Thank you. And please go vote. State elections do matter. November 5th, come out and vote for our great candidates. Thanks for being here.